Welcome to part four, troubleshooting composting, basic tips, how to avoid odors, how to avoid rodents. So, you know, basically if your compost has a bad odor, could be there's too much nitrogen in the pile, could be there's not enough air. So add more carbon, uh, turn your pile. If the center is too dry, not enough water, moisten your pile, turn it. If it's damp, and warm only in the middle, it could be that your pile is too small. So maybe collect more pile, build up your pile. If it's damp and it's still not heating up, it could be there's a lack of nitrogen. Uh, in the winter, this is a good to just kind of add uh, coffee grounds or something that's a good source of nitrogen that's smaller pieces that kind of give it more the kick and makes it more available. So you can, grass clippings is also a good source of, of nitrogen too. Um, avoiding odor issues. You know, again, you want a site with good drainage. You don't want it sitting in a pile of water. Um, practice good housekeeping. Uh, don't add the meat. Don't add the cooked food. Don't add the dairy or fish. And you want prompt handling of your food scraps. So, you know, I showed a, I think that's a, is that a three gallon bucket I showed earlier? But, you know, if you get a five gallon bucket, you're not going to empty it till it's full. And that food scraps is going to begin to release its liquid in that bucket before you take it out to your compost system. And it's going to start to get smelly. So one of the benefits of home composting is you are handling those food scraps before they have a chance to be uh, get smelly. And be a good neighbor. Like, don't be generating those, those um, odors or have your site look unsightly. Have those browns on hand at all time. I've been emphasizing this. All right, have to talk about rodents. Rodents carry many diseases, including hantavirus and leptospirosis. Uh, leptospirosis is a re very rare bacterial infection, but it is spread through their urine. So if you're around soil or water where an infected animal is peed, that germ can invade your body through breaks Break, you know, mostly through breaks in your skin, like scratches or open wounds. Um, it can also enter your, your nose and mouth. So avoiding rodents is critical. Let me just say that the rodents are here in our communities and often composting gets blamed, but it's our open public trash cans. It's open dumpsters. If you're near an open dumpster, it's overflowing trash cans. That is what giving is giving rodents a 24 seven buffet of food. And when we start to control the rodents and con I mean, excuse me, when we control our food scraps, we're controlling the rodents. One healthy female Norway rat, which is the kind that thrives in the mid Atlantic and huge parts of the United States can have 84 offspring in one year. So you have to beat them back if you know there are rodents in your neighborhood. And you want to site your compost system away from trash cans and dumpsters. So we have this sheet of nine tips to avoid rodents. Let me quickly go through them. I've mentioned this multiple times. Do not compost meat, dairy, fats, oil, cooked food. Never leave your food scraps exposed. Always uh, incorporate all bits of food well in into the pile. Make sure they're not visible. Um, you want to cover the piles with the thick layer of your browns. And you want to maintain at least three feet of space around your system. Uh, open space makes rodents nervous about predators. Think like a rodent with a hawk. They like, um, they like clutter. They like hiding places. They like to run around protected areas like walls. So avoid clutter. Trim back your grasses and shrubs to eliminate potential rodent hiding places. And then if you're an active composter, that's a plus because... Um, if you're turning your piles frequently, rodents see no opportunity for habitat to make a home in your pile. If you have a bin system, like what's shown here, I do recommend a barrier at the base to prevent um, any critters from, you know, rodents. It could be, you know, mice, not just rats. Um, sometimes in the winter, they might tend to be attracted to your bin. So a quarter inch hardware cloth or something else inhospitable, if you're putting it on cement or a six inch dugout pit with sand or gravel can work. And then, you know, if you're able to moving your system from time to time, again, rodents like habitats that are undisturbed. So activity is good. All right. And this just shows an example of um, hardware cloth staked under, um, you can just get 10 stakes, 
uh, REI, other places uh, to stake it out on top of that will prevent um, critters from coming in. Not the critters we want, not the microorganisms, but just the ones, the pests we don't want. 